Hey, and welcome to the Johnson Seven Generations Family Story. I'm your presenter, Pitala Mani, excited to share with you this new narrative uh, that I have crafted and researched and found and is delivering here for you. Um, just a simple framework for yet more discovery, uh, just something to stoke your curiosity. So to begin with, um, I'm doing a seven generation story, so it's going to start all the way back to um, Mariah Rebecca Larkin and her husband, William Johnson, also known as Kerner. Not a military reference that I could find. Um, it may have something to do with corn. I'm not really sure. But these two crazy kids were evangelical Methodists, and they were proselytizing uh, in Ireland. And while they were there, they gave birth to two sons, uh, Noble and James before they came to the United States uh, during what was called the, the Great Awakening. It's the beginning of evangelical Christianity's um, spread and appeal uh, across the country. Then soon, uh, the Revolutionary War broke out and Noble and his brother James enlisted. Uh, sadly, James was uh, a prisoner of war um, for, for more than a year, uh, a prisoner of the British and, and kept in a ship um, uh, off the harbor and he not only survived, it was harrowing, he not only survived, he's written about um, these experiences. And the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution have uh, copies of his uh, original story. So you can look that up. It's, it's, um, it's short and it's very descriptive and very, very powerful. But it is um, his brother Noble from which our, our Johnson lineage uh, descends. And after, well, and after the Revolutionary War, um, both both brothers, you know, married, had children, and um, actually uh, James uh, went on to live a very long, uh, healthy life and, and died in Hendersonville, uh, North Carolina, where a lot of families settled and where to this day there is the historic Johnson Family Farm, which is still in operation. It's incredible. They have an environmental school, a museum, um, and I think they're even doing some very forward as of you know recently, some of the younger generation came in and they're doing some very forward thinking, like farm to table um, type work. So I've not yet been down there. Um, Uncle Donnie has been. Uh, I hear they have a family reunion every year. So a place to visit. That's Hendersonville, uh, North Carolina, the historic Johnson family farm just outside Asheville. And there we also have a, a family cemetery as well. Um, Cockadoo to you too. Uh, moving on. Of the two brothers, it's Noble that we descend, and Noble begat Captain John Johnson, who um, begat uh, Dr. Harvey Fletcher Johnson. And Dr. Harvey Fletcher Johnson had his doctorate in uh, divinity. And during uh, the Civil War, he was on the Confederate side, administering faith to the Confederate soldiers. Afterwards, he uh, migrated southward, uh, married Margaret Bates in, uh, while he was in Tennessee. And the two of them moved to Brookhaven, Mississippi. And Brookhaven, Mississippi is an interesting uh, place within, within the family narrative. Again, um, interesting place within the family narrative. It's where these three families, the McGrath, the Beckers, and the Johnsons, uh, as we understand our identity and our lineage, this is where they all met up. And, and um, it was, in fact, uh, Dr. Harvey Fletcher's son, Dr. John Harvey Johnson, who was a medical doctor, um, he married Katie McGrath. Katie, Katie, or Catherine McGrath goes by Katie. She was the daughter of John McGrath and Ellen Flood. Uh, she's first generation uh, Irish, and um, she married, and one of her sisters married a Becker. So the McGrath sisters are really kind of this uh, connection between between the families as we've come to know them. And the Beckers uh, were actually in. Um, Brookhaven ahead of time before the Marath, before the Johnsons, and they hail from uh, French and German descent. They have a beautiful, beautiful um, documented history, photograph stories, um, which are accessible through our, our cousin Judy. She's, she's been kind enough to give me access to some of the family uh, narratives and, and, and stories. Um, so while Dr. Harvey Fletcher was uh, in Brookhaven, uh, what actually led him there was uh, through the, the Methodist faith. There's a Whitworth, at that time, was Whitworth uh, College for Females. Uh, he became president of that school. And um, then it was his grandson, our, our grandfather, Doc. Uh, Doc, whose mom is Katie McGrath. So she's our great-grandmother. 
Um, Doc was, was, was born and raised in, in Brookhaven. Um, when he was coming of age, there was, um, I don't want to say insistence, I heard there was like encouragement for him to go to medical school, so he went to medical school, and when he was doing his residency in Staten Island, he met Mickey Brennan. And Mickey Brennan was, a, was also an immigrant to the U.S. and when she was still a teenager. And they, they met at a hospital where they were working, and they married, and they decided not to settle in Brookhaven. They instead uh, initially moved around a bit and settled in, uh, in Amarillo, Texas, as, as you all know. During World War II, uh, Doc enlisted, and he was stationed overseas. During those years, uh, Jeremiah Junius and little baby Michael went with their mother, Mickey, and lived in Brookhaven. So there's actually a time when, you know, our, our uncles, thank you again, where our uncles um, lived in Brookhaven and, and got to know their cousins and, and got to have the experience of, of being in Brookhaven at a young age. And um, Uncle Michael and I have had talks about this. It's very, it was very, uh, for, very formative, very powerful experiences. And, and uh, I joke with him that he basically, with Ghanis, has kind of recreated that, that sense of the neighborhood where all the families lived together on one block, which they did. And our grandpa, Doc, grew up with like some like 40 first cousins on one block. <clears throat> But it was after World War II and the, and, the, and the Johnsons really settled down in Amarillo that our identity really starts to, to take shape. You have to think, you know, um, Doc Johnson is coming from this Methodist lineage, but Mickey is a very strong Catholic. And um, so the boys are raised, you know, our dad and his brothers are raised Catholic and they go to Catholic schools. And when the Catholic schools in Amarillo weren't quite living up to expectation, they had come to hear about the ones in Atchison and slowly but surely you know, people started migrating up to Atchison. And it was in Atchison that our parents met uh, in college while, while at BC. So that is where I'm going to put a little um, pin in, in our story and just count back the seven generations. So this is just the broad frame of our seven generation story, our pre-revolutionary war story. Um, and I'm just going to trace back real quickly. So for, your, for, you know, for those who are taking notes right now, um, you have William... Um, Colonel Johnson, uh, you have uh, Noble, and Noble begets Captain John, begets Dr. Harvey Fletcher, begets Dr. John Harvey, begets Doc Johnson, begets Jeremiah. So essentially, let's see, we would be um, our generation, um, my siblings, we are the uh, sixth generation to be born here uh, in the United States. Um, uh, and that would mean the children, nieces, and nephews then uh, are these, uh, indeed the seventh generation. So the seventh generation, for those who don't know the seventh generation story, is derived from Native American teachings, where before one takes uh, an action, uh, they consider the impact of that action upon seven generations. So in, in honor of that teaching, which is a very wise teaching, I decided to look at our ancestry through a lens of seven generations. So you can think about the immigrants that were coming over here to the United States and what their dreams were, and think about all that went into um, being in existence now, and and everything that they everything that they had to um, uh, overcome in, in terms to uh, establish a new life here for their children and their family. So here we are. We're living we're living that reality today. And I want to thank everybody for listening to my seven generation story. Uh, I have it written. It's up on my uh, it's up on my website. And um, I look forward to hearing back from folks who have a personal connection to the story about how perhaps this uh, maybe it enlightened them or in, in inspired them to, to seek further information. So that's all I have for today. Thank you very much.